All right, guys, we are back once again, and we are going to be covering today the two easiest way to meet attractive women. Now, I'm not going micro in this video because I know, you know, we could talk about online dating, which is not the easiest way to meet attractive women. <laughs> we could talk about cold approaches, all sorts of different ways to meet attractive women. But we're talking about right now is philosophies. Okay, philosophies. And this way of doing things mirrors the two primary ways that men and women organize themselves, which is in patriarchies and matriarchies. So the two approaches, the first one, and the first one's very obvious, right? It's very obvious. But you need to put yourself in locations where attractive women are. So what this means is that as a man, you are going to surround yourself heavily with women. So that means doing things like uh, get going to you know yoga classes, dancing. Um, you might want to uh, work at an animal shelter, do some volunteering work. Uh, gain a dog's great. Women love dogs. It's a great way to meet women. Also, the dog helps to start conversations. But the point here is that you put yourself in an environment that women are going to be in. Now, this can be totally fine. Can be totally fine if, if as a man, this is the approach you want to take. Um, but what I will say about it is that it also is where a lot of predatory men go. So if you're a guy, for instance, who's hanging out in with some women's rights feminist circle, you're probably a, a predator, probably a predator, um, because that's where a lot of those guys will go because they know there's a lot of women there and they can be the wolf in sheep's clothing. So a lot of weak men tend to take this route. And I'm not saying that you are weak if you take this route. I'm just saying it has a lot of appeal to weaker men because they they basically are playing some kind of numbers game. Like, well, if I'm in a group that has, if I'm in some sort of emotional sharing circle and, you know, four out of five people are, are women, then probably, like, just by being in proximity, I'm going to have a better chance of being able to get with one of these girls, right? If you're working on an animal shelter and it's mostly women who are there, if you're going to a dance class, it's mostly women there. If you're the, the guy there, one of the few guys there, and especially if you're one of the guys there who is masculine, who knows some understanding of game, how women work, then you're going to stand out dramatically because you, you have an advantage in um, just the demographics. So it's a smart strategy. I don't want to knock it and say you shouldn't do it. But it is also a pattern that guys who go to this stuff, um, if they don't have any other male friends or only spending time around women, a lot of them tend to not be very masculine and, and are often predatory. The other route to meeting attractive women is totally different. And that's competing rather than trying to hang out in the matriarchy and get some sexual scraps from the women who, you know, while, you know, you're around these attractive women, so it makes it easier for you to talk to them. They feel more comfortable with you. So you're able to sleep with them. That's the matriarchy route. The other route is like the patriarchy route, I guess you could say. And that is involves you becoming a man of status and power so that what happens is that women come to you or your requirements you know you being able to to talk to these women is much easier um, because you're so heavily pre-selected so this would be the root of, of going to some sort of, um, you know, lifestyle guru or whatever to, um, to, sh to, to show that you're living a really cool life, that you know people 
and to convey to women that you're in a high status position. And so when you're in this high status position, women want your lifestyle, they want your connections, they want to spend time with you. And of course, you know, they, you're often exuding some sort of masculine aura because even other men are following you, right? You're in a leadership position, you're in an influential position. So because of the proximity to power and the access that you have, women are going to, you know, they'll message you, they'll come to you. And so this strategy would be, um, you know, use leveraging your Instagram account, for instance, to pull, um, to pull, you know, and convey in a really cool lifestyle so that women are going to be, be drawn to that. Um, <clears throat> it, it's also, you know, the issue with this approach though, what I'll say, its downside is that you you have it's almost like first off you, like if you're not leveraging social media with it then you're really missing out because in order to become a high enough status man that women are going to notice if you're not using social media then it's very very difficult to convey it because you're too anonymous. So you'd have more of a, um, you just get lucky that you went to an event and you met another important guy there, or maybe there was a woman there and she saw you. Um, you know, a lot of this would be like niche fame. So if you're a performer in a local, local band, then you have status, women will be drawn to you from that. Um, and there's a little bit of blending here because maybe a lot of women are going to, you know, performance of these two models. So this is the downside is that especially if you're not using social media, it will usually take a substantial amount of time before you get to a level of status and success where you really do stand out. Um, <clears throat> you have to get like to a level of fame, essentially. That's what it really is. It's leveraging fame and, and all that kind of stuff. So, but if you leverage social media, you can niche that down a lot more. So you can meet women in your, you know, in your city going about your life. You can even DM people in your city, message them on, on your social media app, and then they can see your lifestyle and they get drawn to it. But the point here is that in this case, you're, you're creating like a lighthouse that women are going to come to you. In the other case, you are putting yourself in locations where women are. So it's really like you either make the women, all the women come to you, or you go where the women already are. That's the two primary philosophies. And of course, like we said at the beginning of the video, you can really niche down if you want to here, because there's obviously different modalities to meet women within these two philosophies. And the two can and arguably should be blended. I'm not saying do one or the other. But you do want to think about this stuff from the very outset because for some guys, they don't have much of an – like they're very good at talking to girls on an emotional level. They're good at connecting with women. Um, they're not like big lifestyle individuals. You know, they're, they're not going to benefit a lot from taking the lighthouse approach. They're going to – it's going to make much more sense for them to start to do activities that women do, that attractive women do. And just by being in proximity to them, the women are going to, they're going to know how to talk to women. They're going to be able to get access to these women that they normally would not be able to get access to, were they not excelling in that little environment. And that's how they'll be able to pick women. For other guys who really have no interest in activities that women do and are really focused on, on business and a more, you know, traditional masculine path of sort of, you know, resource and power accumulation, you definitely want to go the other path where you become someone that women want to be with. And you just simply make sure you're using social media to market yourself accordingly. So those are the two philosophies, the two major strategies in order to meet attractive women. And I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out the links below, uh, working with me, getting my masterclass, 
And of course, sign up for my email list. It's totally free. You get a copy of my book. Check the links below.